Hello, class. Today we're going to talk about how to conduct a destination SWOT analysis, which is for our final project. Okay, so first of all, there are two questions I need to address. What is a SWOT analysis, right? And what do we mean by use this for analyzing a destination? Okay, so SWOT represents for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And by analysis, we mean use these four aspects as a framework or guideline to evaluate an organization, a company, and to think about, okay, what are the strengths that we have, weaknesses that we have to address? What are some opportunities that we have? And what are some threats that we are facing? And by identifying these different elements, we then can make a conclusion and make suggestions for the company to improve their operation, uh, their marketing strategy. So this is the use of a SWOT analysis. And then we can use this to analyze the development of a destination. So when we are conducting this final project, you want to think about yourself as someone who work for a destination. It can be a city, can be a state, or even a country. Think the whole area as a tourism destination. How is our industry going on? What are some problems? Uh, what's our future? And um, you can also think about yourself as a consultant so that you now are hired by a destination and you're analyzing their current condition and making suggestions for them. And so to report to local government, to local tourism operators, and so to tell them, okay, this is your current condition and what do you want to consider uh, doing in the future? So this is the general idea of doing our destination SWOT analysis. So now you understand the general framework of conducting a SWOT analysis. I need to explain a little bit more about how do we differentiate each dimension. Here I have a two by two matrix to show that they are actually four different aspects. Generally speaking, when you are looking at, okay, strengths and opportunities, weaknesses and threats, you know, okay, we're analyzing things from the positive aspects and negative aspects. However, oftentimes I see people get confused between strengths and opportunities because they sound very similar and people put uh, something in both dimensions which are actually not accurate. The way to think about these four is to put strengths and weaknesses as a pair of concepts and then opportunities and threats as another pair of concepts. So strengths and weaknesses are to identify our internal elements and factors that we're doing good or bad. By internal, I mean the things that the organization or destination can control, right? Or something that is existing. What's our resources? What's our existing attractions, hotels, transportation of this certain destination? Are we have enough resources or not? And when we move on to opportunities and threats, we're talking about external elements, something that this organization or destination cannot control. For example, political environment, economic upturn or downturn, right? These are not something we can control, but that there might be some trend in the future that we want to take advantage of, or there might be some external threats that we need to be prepared about. So that's opportunities and threats, something we cannot control and something that usually are future oriented. So now let's apply it to a destination. The strength would be to describe what destination excels at and separate it from its competitors. And the weaknesses will be the features of the destination that stop it from performing at its optimum level. So what are the different elements 
within a destination that we need to evaluate, right? It's like a checklist for us. And throughout the semester, we have already talked a lot of different aspects of tourism. So now it's time for you to put them together to do this analysis. So within a destination, first of all, it's our attractions. This is our core resources. This is what make people want to come to visit our city, our destination, right? So we need to think about, okay, how's our, the quality of our attractions, service quality, attractiveness, reputation. And do we have a diverse, diversify profile of different attractions? Do we have um, museums? Do we have zoos? Uh, maybe events, maybe natural resources, uh, theme parks. And then uh, if we are promoting some cultural attractions, are they authentic? Do people feel that they can actually learn something about this destination. So these can be different ways for us to evaluate the attraction of the destination. Beyond the core attractions, each destination will need to have a lot of suppliers, right, to support tourists from traveling to, um, to visit this place. So we have different accommodations, we have food and beverage, transportation, event venues. And so you then can search for, are there, how many hotel rooms are there? Are they, what's the capacity of this city? Are there too many travelers and they cannot cater to? Or there are not enough hotel rooms. They are, uh, they are not different. They do not cover different market levels. That then can be a problem. How is, uh, is it easy? to have access to this city. Uh, are there a lot of direct flights to the city? Um, and is it easy for travelers to navigate within the city? Even can be uh, simple things. Is it easy for people to get from the airport to their hotels, to the downtown area, right? And then we also can think about the natural resources of this destination we can think about uh, what are the existing markets that we have, or do we need to expand our target market? Safety and security, this is definitely something important to have we put into any measure to make sure our tourists are safe. And this goes back to marketing, right? What's our brand image? Do we have a clear message to send out to our potential travelers and do we need to rebrand our city? And last but not least, we also can look into the human resources of this destination. Do we have enough people that will work in the hospitality industry, right? Do we have college programs, training programs, culinary institute that are training people so that we will have professionals to work in our destination. And when we are thinking about these different elements, we need to evaluate them. If we're doing good, then that's strength. If we're not doing very good, then that will be our weaknesses. That's why I say this is a pair of concept. Again, it goes back to, for example, hotels. If we have a lot of hotel, we have enough hotel rooms, we covered different levels of markets, uh, they all provide good services, then we will say, okay, accommodation is one of our strengths. People will always be happy when they visit and stay in our hotels. Or if you find, well, it looks like we don't have enough hotels, they are not clean, not safe, then hotels become a problem and that is a weakness and we need to improve that, right? And so it's the same logic when, it, when we move on to opportunities and threats. So generally speaking, the opportunities for a destination would be favorable external factors. Usually we're talking about um, something that's going to happen in the future that the destination can use to give it a competitive advantage. And the threats is the opposite. It will be external factors, something we cannot control, something that's going to happen in the future that have the potential to harm the destination. 
And again, we're going to break it down. So what are the specific things to consider about the opportunities and the threats a destination is facing, right? The first external environment is political environments, especially if we are thinking about international travel, right? Is it easy for international travelers to obtain visa to enter a certain country as a destination? And general foreign policies, for example, um, currently we have this pandemic. So each country establishing their policy about a uh, vaccine and COVID test. So these all influence the uh, how easy for a destination to welcome international travelers. And the next definitely is about the economic environment. Do people have money to travel, basically? Is there a downturn in terms of the overall uh, national or international economy recession? Do people have um, disposable income to travel? Generally speaking, we're talking about, okay, Chinese travelers, Indian travelers have more purchasing power now. So those are growing and booming market. We talked about the senior travelers, they have money and time to travel. So these are growing markets. And also if we're talking about international travel, there's the exchange rate. If um, US dollar is strong, if it's, so that then that will make it, make it relatively cheap to travel to some other countries, for example, Bali. And also goes back to the pandemic, right? People probably are losing jobs and so that they have less disposable income and they might be more price sensitive. And some other trend in the market uh, worldwide, nationwide, and industry-wide. For example, technology is always uh, something changing that, uh, something that is changing very fast recently. And also people care more about sustainability, environmentally friendly facilities, products. So these are all uh, trends that we can take advantage of, or at least we don't want to be left behind. Last but not least, definitely our competitors. That is some of our external threats and how can we differentiate that, if differentiate ourselves from our competitors. So these are the specific things we can think about when we are talking about opportunities and the threats. And once we have identified specific things in each dimension, threat, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, that's not the end of this whole analysis or report, okay? Every time when we are saying we are doing an analysis, then we don't just list, okay, what's existing. We cannot just identify for um, the destination and say, okay, these are what we find and you guys, um, can do whatever you want to do with it. Well, we need to think for them. We digest these different dimensions and we come up with a comprehensive conclusion and recommendation for them. First of all, so now we know what are the strengths, right? So how can we leverage the strengths to uh, improve the destination? What are some of the weaknesses and problems? So how can we avoid or correct those problems and even convert them into strengths? And what's even better is um, we know there are some opportunities that is going to happen. So how can we use our existing strengths to take advantage of those opportunities? And of course, to avoid those threats. So this is also the key element and uh, a very valuable section in our SWOT analysis. So to summarize, the whole structure of our SWOT analysis would start with a introduction, which is the general background of this destination. And then we move on to SWOT, the four different dimensions, what are the strengths, a few items, what are some weaknesses we identified, opportunities and threats. 
And finally, we will have a section that is talking about our recommendations. We want to come up with at least the three, right? What are the different things we can do for the future? 